Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be adjusting the ignition timing on this 1971 CB350. Um, this is one of my absolute favorite bikes. I love this color. I bought this at Vintage Days back in 2012, I believe. Um, just a fantastic bike. All original. Um, great shape. So while we wait for things to warm up so that I can get back to work on the Superhawk over here, I'm going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on this one and a few others. Um, so before we get started, we need a couple of tools. Uh, I've got a little indicator light here. Uh, this is just a 12 volt indicator bulb with some, some leads soldered onto it with some alligator clips. Um, and a, Feeler gauge set, a 14 millimeter wrench, a couple of JIS screwdrivers, and a flathead screwdriver. So let me get the tripod set up and we'll get to work. All right, the first thing we'll need to do is remove the points cover and then the stator cover. So I'm using the JIS screwdriver so we don't strip these screws out. This one usually comes off without the gasket sticking because this gasket ideally is never getting any oil on it. Let's see if we can pop this off without tearing it. Alright, so there's our points. Then we'll remove our alternator cover here. Now there's two things you got to watch out with this. Each of these screws has a, a rubber o-ring on it and then there's also a very thin gasket or narrow gasket on the back of this which depending on how long it's been since you've been in there can rip. Looks like this one's going to come off without any trouble but you need a little bit, little bit of oil coming out of here so make sure you got a rag on hand. But here's this gasket. If it's been on there for quite a while, it has a tendency to tear. So don't try to reuse that if it does. Um, they're pretty cheap. And then the little O-rings I'm talking about right here, they can also tear every once in a while. If they go in crooked, well, the last time it was put on, they can get pinched down in that groove there. If that happens, it's going to leak. So you'll have to replace those as well. Uh, we got lucky this time around. So, let me... so the first thing we're going to do is set the gap for the left um, the left points here. So we're going to do that by rotate the engine with the 14 millimeter wrench um, until the points gap is at its widest uh, which is basically most of the rotation here I'm just gonna go around a little bit alright so and Honda calls for between 0.3 millimeters and 0.4 millimeters so I've got feeler gauges here. We got 0 0.3, 0 0.35, and 0.4. Um, make sure these are clean. Uh, this one had oil on it, um, just I guess from the manufacturing process to keep it from rusting. I went ahead and sprayed a little brake clean and wiped them off. The last thing you want to do is be shoving dirt or oil in between these contact points here. So. You want to be careful. The reason I have these three out is this this will rotate. It's on a little spring here. So if you're just shoving that feeler gauge in there, you can kind of force the reading. I could easily force the 0.4 in there, even though the gap may not actually be 0.4. So what I'm looking for is for 0.3 to go in with no resistance, 0.35 to go in with some resistance. That way I know I'm in between between these here so 
right now the, even the point three doesn't want to go in so I'm going to loosen the left points Got two little screws here hopefully these are in good shape because I replaced them in the past they were all chewed up from decades of people probably using a Phillips head screwdriver and screwing the ends of these up and then there's these little tabs here and you just take a flathead screwdriver kind of use those as leverage and I'm just rotating it just a little bit to open that gap and we're gonna go back and recheck that's getting a little better so there's 0.3 going in without any drag whatsoever 0.35 has some drag and then 0.4 doesn't want to go in at all so we're we're within the range this doesn't have to be perfect if you're somewhere around 0.35 you're gonna be just fine so I'm gonna go ahead now and snug these up these little screws are threaded into this points plate which is maybe a millimeter and a half thick there's probably only three or four threads that these are grabbing into so do not over tighten those you'll strip it right out and then you're gonna have a, a bigger project on your hands so sometimes when you tighten these up it can shift this points plate a little bit so it's worth just double checking so now that we've got that we can get our little indicator light here and you're going to clip it the positive side to this metal band make sure it's not contacting anything else you don't want to ground that out and then clip the other end to the engine there i'm going to try to fold this around so it's in frame here i don't know if this is going to want to Stay. Give me a second. All right. Well, I'll make sure that is visible. So, so what we're looking for for the the left hand side, we want this to come on when we hit the LF mark. That's going to line up with this little notch over here on the compression stroke. So I'm gonna rotate the engine. You can kind of feel that was not the comp compression stroke. So we're gonna go around 360 degrees. Let me turn the ignition on here. And we're looking for this little light to come on. You gotta kind of hold it. It's gonna want to roll past, so I'm kind of turning it, hold it with my fingers at the same time. So we actually got lucky with that one. You can see it. It's on here. I'm gonna roll this back just a little bit to turn off. Keep an eye on this. So we approaching our left. Right when those line up, that came on. So that was actually, I mean, that's good, I guess, but kind of makes a poor example. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to shift this. Let me loosen these up. When you're poking around in here with a screwdriver, make sure your ignition's turned off so you don't short anything out. So I've turned the ignition off. I'm going to loosen these screws. These are holding the... the backing plate in place. Now you don't want them too loose because if it tips out a little bit that can actually affect your timing. So it's just loose enough that I'm going to be able to rotate it. Put this flathead screwdriver right here and I'm just going to shift this a little bit. So now I rotated the whole plate here and let's watch what happens. So let me knock it back a little bit. Turn this on.
So now it came on early. You can see the light lit up, but the LF mark has not reached this mark here. Let me back that up. Turn the ignition off. Rotate a little bit back. Ignition back on. Uh, if we want this and this to line up just as the light comes on. So we're a little early right now. I back it up. I'm just gonna go back just a little bit and I don't even know if the camera's gonna pick it up. I moved it a little bit. It really does not take much. This is kind of a, a fiddly process. But if you take your time it's pretty simple. I went the wrong way I think. So now it's came on a little bit a little bit earlier. Still early. So that's a lot of this kind of back and forth. Pretty close. There we go. That's where I wanted it. I'm gonna turn this off. Now, you want to snug these up and then recheck it. Because again, if you're if you had these loosened up quite a bit and the points plate was kind of tipped outward, that's going to affect your timing as well. So we've snugged those up. Ignition back on. Let's double check it. And there we go. So that's the left hand side. So ignition back off. Now, so we're done messing with the, the points plate. The right hand side timing is set by moving by adjusting the gap. So I'm going to switch the light. So now we're over on the right hand side. And then in this case, we're looking for the F mark to line up with the, the mark on the stator here. On the 350. This, I'm, I'm holding it, but it, it wants to turn itself right past, which can kind of be a pain. It would help to have a extra hand once in a while, but let's see where we're at. So we're really late, and you can see how far past the fire mark here. Let me turn this off. So what we're going to do now is loosen these two screws up. My ignition's off so I'm not going to short anything out. So loosen these up just a bit and then I'm going to use, there's a little tab here, I'm going to use these little spots on the points plate. And I'm just going to shift these a little bit. Turn it back on. See if we got any closer. So now we're pretty close. Just a hair late. So ignition's back off. Tiny little adjustments at this point because we're really close. Ignition back on. You can see how that just kind of almost jerked the wrench out of my hand there. 
that were just a little bit early. So, and I hardly moved this thing at all. Okay. And now we're a little bit late. So, you can see what a fiddly little process is, but it's worth taking your time. So your bike's gonna run quite a bit better. Now it's like I went the wrong way. So with this, if you're careful, because we're not sticking a screwdriver in here, the ignition's still on, I've lined it up with the fire mark. And I'm gonna try to move this. Let's see if I can get close. There we go. So, roll it back. There we go. So the light just came on, fire mark lined up with the mark on our stator. So I'm going to turn this off and now I'm going to tighten these two screws up and hope that I'm not shifting this out of position. So I didn't tighten them up a little bit. Before I go any further, I'm going to double check to see if tightening that up moved anything. Okay, looks good. Ignition's back off, because otherwise I'd be shorting this out right here. The screwdriver. Everything's snugged up. Double check the back plate here. And then uh, one last check for the right hand side. There we go. And that's all there is to it. This process is exactly the same for the 360 and the 450. Um, and actually everything's in the same position. Um, you want to make sure before you've done this, make sure you've adjusted your cam, tain, cam chain tension. Um, process is the same for the 350 and 450 uh, and in the, the I think even the tensioner housing is basically the same on the 360 though the tensioner is on the, on the front of the crankcase so check your manual for the instructions for that uh, that can make a difference if things are haven't been adjusted in a while and the, there's a lot of play in the cam chain that is gonna affect um, the interaction between the crank and the cam. Um, other than that though, I know it's a fiddly process, but it's it's really simple. Just take your time. Um, and that's about it. So thanks for watching. If you like this, um, think about hitting that subscribe button. Uh, I'll put up a, a playlist at the end of this here. Um, I'm waiting for the weather to warm up a little bit so I can jump back on to the CV77 project. That thing is ready to go. Um, and thanks for watching.